Hi, this is Daniel DeToro. Do you find the conflicting information about dietary sodium and potassium confusing? In this video, I'll share why sodium and potassium are essential, sodium and potassium RDA, natural versus added sodium, sodium and potassium in your diet, and potassium, sodium, and electrolytes. Sodium and potassium are essential nutrients that must come from your diet. By coincidence, they are located next to each other in group one of the periodic table. A diet providing too little or too much sodium and potassium can cause serious illness and death. Humans need and crave salt. It's programmed in our DNA and taste buds. But we do not crave potassium. Potassium deficiency is rare in most countries because it is abundant in plant and animal foods. Sodium deficiency is also rare, but it is not as abundant in minimally processed foods. For example, one ear of corn has one milligram of sodium and 250 milligrams of potassium for a 250 to one ratio of potassium to sodium. One cup of cooked spinach has about 125 milligrams of sodium and 840 milligrams of potassium for a 7 to 1 ratio of potassium to sodium. Sodium is used to transmit nerve impulses, contract muscle fibers including the heart, relax muscle fibers, and maintain fluid balance. Potassium is also needed to transmit nerve impulses, contract and relax muscles including the heart, and maintain fluid balance. Sodium and potassium perform many of the same functions, but in different ways that are beyond the scope of this video. Dietary sodium comes from two sources, added and naturally occurring. For most people, the problem is not naturally occurring sodium, but added sodium. The main source of added sodium is salt. Salt has been used for thousands of years to preserve and flavor foods. For the U.S. diet, the main source of salt is not naturally occurring or added during cooking or at the table. Almost 80% of the salt comes from prepared foods. Average sodium intake is about 3,400 milligrams per person per day. Roughly 2,600 milligrams of the 3,400 comes from salt added to prepared foods. A 2400 calorie a day diet of minimally processed foods provides a few hundred milligrams of sodium daily. The problem is not naturally occurring sodium, but sodium added to prepared foods. One cup of wheat flour has about three milligrams of sodium and 135 milligrams of potassium, a 45 to one ratio. A store-bought bagel can have up to 700 milligrams of sodium, providing far less potassium than sodium. An 8-ounce glass of milk provides three times more potassium than sodium, but a 16-ounce milkshake can also have less potassium than sodium. This homemade meal has about 270 milligrams of natural sodium plus 230 milligrams of added sodium. A similar restaurant meal has about 1,600 milligrams of total sodium. The difference between the two meals is equivalent to about one half teaspoon of added salt. The homemade meal provides more potassium than sodium, while the restaurant meal provides more sodium than potassium. In prepared foods, salt is not the only source of added sodium you need to check the ingredients list for words containing sodium and soda. A diet of prepared foods can provide thousands of milligrams of added sodium daily and no added potassium. One restaurant meal can provide as much sodium as three teaspoons of salt. I know some of you may find that hard to believe. At one chain Chinese restaurant, a meal of hot and sour soup and noodles and prawns provides more than 7,000 milligrams of sodium. 
The takeaways from this section are that most foods are naturally low in sodium and high in potassium. The main source of added sodium is a diet of prepared and processed foods. Contrary to popular belief, there is no recommended dietary allowance for potassium or sodium. Because potassium and sodium deficiencies are so rare, there is no need for RDAs. Deficiencies can occur when you lose a large amount of fluid in a short period of time due to diarrhea or vomiting. Depending on the severity, symptoms of low sodium range from headache and weakness to confusion, seizures, and coma. Some supplements and multivitamins provide 2 to 3 percent of the daily value for potassium, but no multivitamin provides significant added sodium. The American Heart Association recommends limiting added sodium to 2300 milligrams a day and preferably 1500 milligrams. These recommendations are primarily for people at risk of high blood pressure and cardiovascular disease. A high sodium diet can also lead to kidney disease, osteoporosis, and stomach cancer. Recommendations for dietary potassium range from as low as 1500 milligrams a day to as high as 5000 milligrams. Having low or high potassium can cause similar symptoms. Both can cause abnormal heart rhythms. And too much potassium can cause paralysis. So how much sodium and potassium do you need daily? Well, it depends on many factors. Regardless what internet diet experts claim, no one really knows. There are people eating foods providing only naturally occurring sodium, getting by on as little as 200 milligrams a day. Since minimally processed foods have more potassium than sodium, they are eating a high potassium, low sodium diet. Sedentary workers in air-conditioned offices may not need as much sodium as active workers outside on a hot summer day and losing sodium through perspiration. What is known is that too many people at risk for cardiovascular disease eat a very high sodium diet. And high sodium diets tend to be low potassium prepared food diets. By that I mean the amount of sodium exceeds the amount of potassium the opposite of what occurs in nature. Nutrition facts labels list total sodium per serving. Some manufacturers use unusually small serving sizes to make their foods appear healthier. The new food label also requires manufacturers to list the amount of potassium. Some manufacturers of salty foods like potato chips and fried potatoes have voluntarily listed the amount of potassium in their nutrition facts label. Unfortunately, the amount of potassium is offset by the high number of calories in these fried foods. And many prepared foods are high in sodium and low in potassium. This homemade versus restaurant breakfast provides about half the calories and 70% less sodium. This homemade meatloaf meal has about the same number of calories as the frozen meal, but has 55% less sodium. This homemade pulled pork meal combines minimally and highly processed foods. Total sodium is about 1,000 milligrams, but over 80% comes from two items, canned baked beans and boxed potato casserole. Homemade versions can provide significantly less sodium. A leading beverage that replenishes electrolytes provides more sodium than potassium. While currently there is no limit on the amount of sodium added to foods and beverages, the FDA does limit added potassium to less than 100 milligrams. As I've shown, a diet of prepared foods can provide more sodium than potassium. Most plant and animal foods are naturally high in potassium and low in sodium. 
Mustard greens provide 14 times more potassium and beef tenderloin six times more. Whether you dine out, order takeout, or reheat it in your microwave oven, the odds are good you are eating more sodium than your body needs. Replacing prepared foods with home-cooked foods can provide more potassium than sodium. Instead of salt, you can use herbs and spices to flavor your foods. You can also add high potassium, low sodium fruits and vegetables to your diet. Finally, what are electrolytes? An electrolyte is a substance that produces an electrically conducting solution when dissolved in a polar solvent like water. Dissolve salt in water and you have an electrolyte solution of sodium and chloride ions. The same thing happens when salts are dissolved in blood and other polar solvents. Potassium chloride is another salt that produces an electrolyte solution when dissolved in water. The major electrolytes your body needs are sodium, chloride, and potassium. Why do you need electrolytes? For the same reason you need salt and potassium in your diet. Most people do not need expensive electrolyte beverages providing more sugar than electrolytes, even if you do a strenuous workout on a regular basis. The best sources of naturally occurring electrolytes are minimally processed foods. The list includes all the usual foods, fruits, vegetables, legumes, whole grains, dairy, meats, seafood, nuts, and seeds. Please leave a comment if you have any questions about this video. Thank you for watching and healthy eating.